All right, so new day, new weapon, another Incarnon. This one is going to be the Dara Incarnon. And to me, this Incarnon is not the best when you compare it to the, the other ones, like the Sybaris, the Okina, the uh, Sycorus. They're all very powerful. This one, it's good in its own way. It's not the strongest, but as usual, We'll cover the evolutions. We'll cover the build that I made. I think I have two exactly. We'll test in, in the uh, simulacrum. Go to Steel Path and test it there. And then I'll give you my final thoughts on this. So let's get into those evolutions, shall we? Okay, with the Dara Vandal, you turn this thing basically into like a high powered single shot, like boom cannon. Best way I can describe it, it's just one heavy magnetic shot. So that's how this weapon turns. First evolution is evolution two with Crimson Overture and Paragon Essence. Crimson Overture will increase your base damage by six and Paragon Essence will increase by four. But Crimson Overture on kill will give you ammo efficiency for 20, uh, at 20% for a stack of four times, while the Paragon will give you a plus 5% fire rate for five seconds and that will stack up to six times. The Crimson Overture ammo efficiency does not apply in the incarnon state so to me it's useless so i will be going with paragon essence next up is evolution 2 we get extended volley swift deliverance and evolved autoloader extended volley will give you plus 50 percent projectile speed swift deliverance will increase your base mag by 30 and the evolved autoloader will increase the magazine reload when holstered by 50 percent to me the uh extended volley is overall better than all the other options because this gives you more projectile speed so it's easier to get headshots since this weapon does have travel time the swift deliverance doesn't affect your incarnon so it's useless outside of just the base and evolved autoloader litter just to me is not worth it because the weapon reloads really quickly. Next up is evolution four. We get death trap trigger, high ground and elemental balance. Death trap trigger will increase your base crit chance by 14 and will give you an increase in crit damage multiplier by 0.4. High ground will increase your base crit chance by 25% of current stat chance up to 35% and elemental balance will increase your base stat chance by 14. To me, death trap trigger is much better than high ground purely because even with a ton of status, the uh, increase in crit chance is not that well good and it's not really smart to run purely status on a weapon like this so we'll be going with death trap trigger so we get more crit chance and a crit damage multiplier increase because the weapon overall just needs vital sense for a ton of crit damage so let's go ahead and cover those builds test them and go to steel path all right so let's cover the builds i've made the two builds i have is a viral heat crit build and the other one is a corrosive cold crit build because this weapon is mainly a puncture weapon corrosive works quite well because puncture does well against armored enemies and the cold is there because primary frostbite is a thing here we go viral heat this mod right here specifically rifle elementalist can be replaced with shred a bane mod whatever mod you want to put here you can put it here but we are using the three galvanized mods prime cryo rounds malignant force for the viral and we're using thermite for the heat which is what is applying with rifle elementalist and we're using vital sense for the extra crit so now we have a 5.3 and an 85.6 status chance. I think Galvanized Scope, in my opinion, is better than Critical Delay in this case, because if you can't hit a headshot, uh, why are you using an Incarnon? Anyway, uh, Corrosive, basically the same build, except um, <laughs> we just moved the Ds around. That's that, that's about it. Literally, the only difference here is I moved the Ds around because I was uh, stupid. But yeah, that's the uh, two builds. So I'll show them off in the... Uh, Stimmy Locker, and then we'll go test them out in Steel Path. As I don't want to take up too much of your time, as you probably are enjoying the video, seeing how the, the Dara and Karma works. If you guys want to see more content like this, as my channel is growing, make sure you guys hit that like button, do subscribe, and turn on that bell for post notifications so you always get notified whenever I post another video. I love making these videos for y'all, and it seems like a lot of y'all enjoy making, uh, watching them as well. My Hey video did really well. My dual Icor video is doing phenomenal. All of them do well, and I do appreciate all the support. But remember, all those views means there's people out there who haven't subscribed, so make sure you guys subscribe down below so you always get notified. So enjoy the rest of the video. So the first build I'm going to show off is the Corrosive Cold build, and as you see, it does quite well against 165s, but you're mainly not going to be using the weapon in its base form, you're going to be using it in its Incarnon form. So, once you proc into Incarnon, as you see, it does hit very, very nice crits, and like I should have mentioned, you can use Primary Deadhead instead of Primary Merciless since you will be hitting headshots for most enemies, but again, that is all preference if I could hit my shots. So, let's go show off the Viral build now. So here we have the viral build and I swapped off primary merciless for primary deadhead just to show off if you use that instead. So obviously we have galvanized scope and we're using incarnon. We're going to be aiming for the head. Once we get our incarnon charged, we're going to go for our lovely headshots. And as you see, this thing hits unbelievably hard when you use galvanized scope and primary deadhead. I mean, look at that. Those were half a million crits each time. And if I kept building things up and used a pet, it would have been even higher. So I'm going to go ahead and get my build set up. We're going to go to still path and we're going to test that. I'm probably going to use this build just to show how uh, show off how good it could be with a pet. We are now in here and I brought Jay just so I could take advantage of a Fanny MI so I could freeze, not freeze, slow down enemies in their path. But also I wanted to make a mention of now that they've changed how coolant leak works on pets, running coolant leak is actually a very valuable thing because 
because it freezes a ton of the uh, enemies. Coolant Link now on pets freezes a ton of the uh, enemies. So now you're able to take full advantage of uh, cold on top of everything. So your crit damage is doing more. As you see, they're getting a max stack cold every time. If you just like freeze it, you'd see it. Holy hell, a 2.2 million crit, dang. But as you see, thanks to Infinium Eyes, everything is slowed down, losing their armor. But as you see, it doesn't have any issues getting a ton of kills. My poor Jade is a little squishy. And as you saw, I think that was an 8.8 .8 million crit, or I could just be going a little crazy. But as you see, Coolant Leak's helping me by giving me more crit damage. And the weapon overall, even in its non-incarnate state, is doing quite well. I mean, look at all those damage numbers. Oh, so <laughs> good. Oh, and there's Vor, and there went Vor. And one advantage of this one before we wait till the Acolyte spawns is the fact that this weapon is really good at stripping off uh, Overguard. As you saw, that took one shot and that uh, magnetic uh, Eximus unit was already gone. So uh, let's see how this performs on an Acolyte. So I'll see you when the Acolyte gets here. Uh, well, I'll be uh, damned. The Acolyte is already... And of course, it's the one I hate the most. All right, let's see how it works. Holy Christ. That man did not even stand a chance. Look at the damage. 1.1, 1.3. This thing hits so hard. It's why I referred to it to like a 7.6 million. This right here is why I refer to it as a Ga uh, Gauss cannon. It just, it hits so, okay. It, it, it just hits so hard. A monster of a uh, Incarnon. But sadly, when you compare it to all the other ones, it doesn't, well, like uh, the Cybris one's really good. The Okina one is a phenomenal weapon. But uh, I'll finish this mission up and I will see y'all back in the Orbiter. All right, and we're back in the Orbiter. So what are my final thoughts on the Dara Vandal uh, Incarnon? To me, this is actually not a bad Incarnon at all. It is quite powerful. It's quite strong. As you saw during uh, the clip with the uh, Acolyte a little bit after, there was like a 7.8 million crit. Like that's wildly powerful. But is it best option for primaries? Not really, to be honest. It's a little too slow for my tastes. Like when I use slow weapons, I like the Strun. But when it comes to the Incarnate, this thing shoots really, really slow. I would use things like the Burst On or the Boltor for, well, uh, Incarnons that aren't slow but hit hard. But overall, it is not bad. It is very comparable to things like the Letron. While the Letron does have AoE, this thing has a really strong single target and like a little bit of puncture, so it has multi targets. So my final thoughts, it's a good option to pick. It, I it, For this week, I would have picked Okina and Dara like I did. But I'm also going to be picking the Sybris, so that will be coming up soon whenever I get that crafted and ready to be uh, reviewed, as you would see, it is in my uh, boundary. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you guys hit the like button, do subscribe, and turn on that bell for post notifications. Comment down below what uh, type of weapons you want to see outside of the Sybris and upcoming Sycharis uh, and Karnon videos, or Warframes. Tell me down in the comment section below. Either way, see you guys in the next video. Peace out.